In today's episode, we're going to talk about UV filter placement, moving bed filter technology, and ponds gone wrong. To start off with the first question is um, I get asked this quite a bit do I want to put that UV filter before mechanical filtration or after mechanical filtration and this is what I tell you I, I've done a lot of studying on this I've listened to a lot of sales pitches on this about UV placement and uh, you're gonna hear stuff like you take this uh, little microscopic algae and it's going through the UV and then it gets a sunburn and then, so imagine like the skin gets all coagulated and then you have millions of them traveling through and they start to coagulate and get sticky and they clump together and then they get caught in the biofilter. And, and I've heard that over and over and I have to laugh at it because it just doesn't make sense to me because when you put the UV filter on the pond, it usually takes three to five days or seven days for the UV to really kick in and that the uh, suspended UV cells, I mean, uh, the, the algae cells that are traveling through start to disappear. And whether they're falling out in suspension in the pond or they're getting trapped in a, bio in a, in a biomechanical filter, either through a waterfall filter or a, you know, a, some kind of bead filter, it's, it just takes some time. It doesn't happen just one single time goes through, gets burnt, coagulated, boom, gets trapped. I'll tell you this. I always put my UV after. I don't wanna say always, because sometimes there's rare cases where I change stuff up, but most of the time you're gonna find us installing UV filter after um, mechanical filtration. And usually in my designs, I have like a final mechanical filtration past that even, but usually uh, it's gonna be after. And this is why you want to trap as much solids and debris and, and fish poo and all that stuff. You wanna capture as much as possible in mechanical filtration and send clear water into that UV. You don't want to send any particulate. I've seen, I've seen ponds, for example, where the UV is here, mechanical filtration is here, skimmer is here, and they use a submersible pump. A rock falls in, the rock comes up the line, shatters the quartz sleeve inside the UV, breaks it, burns the motor up. I mean, it's, it's a mess. So if that UV would have been put after the mechanical filtration, the rock would have went in, came through, got caught, that got trapped in the mechanical filtration, and then you would have had clear water going to the UV and you wouldn't have had a problem uh, replacing the whole UV filter. So I want to clear as much before I get it in there and send it back to the pond. And then wherever the, the algae, the dead algae ends up, it ends up. It's going to get caught in the mechanical filtration eventually. So there's my answer to that. Okay, let's move on to this one. I have, um, I'm working with a guy named Brian Foster from Portland, Oregon. And he sends me a really good question. The question is, he says, Eric, I want to use the Helix Pond Skimmer and the moving bed waterfall filter, the set it and forget it filter, and I wanna put that on my pond, is that all I need or do I need mechanical filtration as well? It's a, it's a perfect question because um, a lot of people don't understand the moving bed filter technology yet. The moving bed, uh, when I say set it and forget it, uh, in a waterfall situation, it has to be a high flow. High flow water, high flow air, and doesn't allow much of anything to sediment, have settle out inside the waterfall filter. So if any debris should get to that filter, it's gonna get pushed up and back into the pond and then have to end up in a mechanical filter at some point. So uh, uh, the moving bed filter technology is just, imagine like a honeycomb of plastic and it's tumbling around inside the waterfall. And as water passes through there, uh, ammonia gets broken down and it's converted so it's not poisonous to the fish anymore. And that's, that's what the filter is for. Uh, so you have to have some kind of mechanical filtration as well in the system. Otherwise, you're just gonna, you're gonna have your pond's gonna have a lot of sediment and debris floating around in there. So I gotta tell you, when we, when we brought the moving bed waterfall technology to the table, we brought it because we had a lot of ponds that had you know, good skimming, they had good waterfall, they had good aeration, they had 
plenty of um, mechanical filtration, it had to be cleaned a lot, but there was a lot of fish in the pond, and so the pond was going through these weird cycles. We brought moving bed waterfall technology to the table. I didn't need more mechanical or anything else. I didn't need more skimming. All I needed was that good bioactivity, throw the moving bed waterfall filter onto the side of the already existing pond, and boom, and it solves that problem of having ammonia spikes in the pond. So we brought it as an aftermarket piece. Now we do have today a biomechanical reactor, which is uh, below the moving bed technology of the waterfall. We have a place to trap solids as well. We have air assist cycle on that as well. But um, th to answer your question, Brian, no, you have to have a, a mechanical filter on the pond as well. I hope I explained that well enough. Uh, let's go to Ponds Gone Wrong. This is a good one for me because my producer and I, the very first video we ever shot was a Ponds Gone Wrong video. I think it was probably, probably 2006. Uh, I'd have to look that up. But if you haven't seen our original Ponds Gone Wrong video, here's a link right here I'm going to give you. Hit this link and go watch our original Ponds Gone Wrong. You could see how we were kind of all over the place. We didn't know what the heck we were doing yet. But it kind of brought us to where we're at today. So um, let, that's enough about the history of Ponds Gone Wrong. But I'll tell you this. Um, I get people asking me all the time, hey, I, I built my pond. It's a total wreck. It's definitely a Ponds Gone Wrong. Will you come out to my facility or you come out to my place and film a rebuild? And um, I want to explain to everyone what Ponds Gone Wrong means to me and what it what it did when we first started, we found a pond, uh, lots of ponds that were installed professionally and done completely wrong. It's just a total mess. The original ponds gone wrong that we did, the contractor got paid two different times. I can't believe the homeowner paid the contractor twice to build the pond. Don't ask the story. You'll have to go see the video if you want to know the full story on that. But the contractor was paid. He uh, delivered a product that just didn't fulfill the needs of the whole system. It didn't work right. And um, so the pond's gone wrong has always been my mentality like that. If you're a, a do-it-yourselfer and you build a pond and it goes wrong, I kind of chalk that off as like, hey, you're learning in the hobby, it's an experience, and um, hopefully you're having fun along the way and you're getting frustrated and you're overcoming those frustrations by changing things, but that's part of the hobby. It's much different when you pay someone your good hard-earned money to build you something, a lifestyle of a pond, and it doesn't go right. So that's where the whole pond's gone wrong things come from, comes from. It's really contractor failure. Um, and you know, the best of the best are gonna screw up. I know a lot of great contractors and we all screw up at some point. We all, you know, might have a leak. We all might, you know, have a low edge or, you know, maybe we put a pump in and plumbing. I don't know, they're, they're, everyone has a bad day. Something gets, gets screwed up. But the fact is if you get back in there and you get on and you get it fixed and repaired and, and you solve all the problems, then that's okay. But when you deliver a horrible product and you walk away or you lie to the customer and say, hey, I've, I do ponds all the time, and then it's obvious that you don't. That's in our episode two, Ponds Gone Wrong. And uh, that's where I sit on that. So if you did it yourself, I'm not gonna shoot a Ponds Gone Wrong at your place. But if you have a pond and a professional installed it and it's not doing well, I would like to know about it. You can send me an email and I'll take a look at that and hopefully we can, we can um, help you get it figured out. Okay, so that's it about Ponds Gone Wrongs. Question of the day. It's my understanding that pond owners will have three ponds in their lifetime. Which pond number are you on? Your first pond, second pond, third pond? Are you a pondaholic? Do you have more than that? Tell me which number you're at. Put it right here in the comments below. In the meantime, you know how to get me to answer your questions. Hashtag Ask the Pond Digger, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and we'll do our best to find it. Until next time, I'm Eric Triplett, the Pond Digger. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.